What's up guys, Iofo here, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to use Photoshop or at least learn the basics of Photoshop as fast as possible so you can make some awesome graphics for YouTube, for school, or whatever you need Photoshop for. So with that being said, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new document. So to do that, just go to File, New, and here you're going to see the editor to actually create a new document. So the name is what you're going to name the document. We're just going to name it Test. The width and height are going to be the actual size of the document. So 1080p would be 1920 by 1080. 720p would be 1280 by 720. And here are your units. So say you're going to be editing something that you're going to print out on a piece of paper. Instead of using pixels, you can use inches and have it be eight and a half by 11, for example. The resolution and stuff you can keep the same. And the background contents are going to be the color of the base background when you actually create the image. So you can have it as transparent. You can actually have it set as a background color right now, which would be green, or you can make it white. So we're going to make it transparent. And the image size is the size of the current image. So it's going to be 2.64 megabytes and then click on OK. So the first thing we're going to look at is the file tab and see what we can do within that. So we've got new to create a new document. We've got open to open a previous document we've done before. And we've got other open options. We've got close to close the document. We've got save as to actually save the document so we can save as and we can save it as a Photoshop file so that we can actually edit this file within Photoshop later. If you ever wanted to export it, you can save as any other things such as a JPEG or as a PNG file, which would be transparent. And you can choose from there. Now, one important thing a lot of people don't know about is place. So what a lot of people do when they're trying to import images is open the image and then it opens up in a new tab and then they copy and paste it onto the current document. What they don't know is you can go to file and place to actually place a document that you want within your current document. So I can go ahead, look up like dark blue grunge texture, for example, and it places the document within Photoshop. So we're going to leave that the way it is and click the check mark button. Now what we do is we can actually learn about the edit tab. So the edit tab has a bunch of different options. You've got undo and you've got undo to undo your movement. So if I was to undo it, I would get rid of the place. I can also redo it to put the place back. Step forward and step backward are the same thing. It's just to undo multiple times or redo multiple times. You can cut, copy, paste. Now, another thing you can do is actually transform the image. So you can go to transform and you can either rotate the image or flip it over. So if you want to turn it 180 degrees or upside down, click on that and it has been flipped. You can also go into image and you can trim the image or rotate it from here and you can duplicate it by clicking on duplicate and you'll create a copy of the layer in a different document window. So it's going to create a completely new document for that. But right now we're going to look at aligning layers. So how do you align a layer? So first you have to select what you want to actually have the image aligned to. So if I press control A, it's going to select the entire document window and I can align this image to the actual document. So I can go to layer, align layers to selection, vertical centers to vertically align it. And as you can see, this layer is currently selected. Now to deselect, press control D and so you wanted to select this layer, you control click over here. And now you can have this be the selection and have another image aligned to that layer. Now you also have another important tab, which is filter where you can add blurs or you can sharpen images. I use blurs a lot for the background of images to blur them out. So I would go to blur motion blur. And as you can see, I can blur it out so that it's a bit more blurrier and the text stands out when I'm making thumbnails. Now we're going to go ahead and look at some other shortcuts. So I already said control A is to select the entire layer. Control D is to deselect. Control R is to open up rulers. Control T is to open up the transform tool. And here you can actually resize images. Now, if you want the image to actually keep its proportions, hold shift when you're actually moving the handles, but we're not going to worry about that. We're going to worry about filling up the entire document with this blue image. And we're going to click on the check mark to confirm. Okay, so we have this image. Now we're going to learn about some other tools on the left side. So here we have the lasso tool. So if I was to go ahead and just quickly import an image or place an image, I'll just place a uh, money bag over here. You can actually see that, uh, what's it called? The lasso tool can be used to select certain parts of it like so. And then you can right click and do layer via copy and it'll create a new layer of just that portion of the image. So you can select certain parts using this lasso. Now there's also 
the polygonal and magnetic lasso tool, which is more automatic. So if I go like this, it actually selects, you know, the outline of the image. It's magnetic, so it kind of sticks to the image. And I can go all the way around if I wanted to. And I could actually cut the entire image into a new layer. Now, if you want to select certain parts via color, you have the magic wand tool. What you can do is actually hold down here and all the tools available up here, then click on the magic wand tool. And you can actually select by certain colors like so. And then to actually, what's it called? To actually uh, use the functions, right click, and then you can create a new layer via copy. You can create a new layer via paste and do other options within Photoshop as well. And to deselect, just press control D. Then you have the crop tool, which is used to crop your image. So if I was to crop it and then press enter, the new document is cropped as seen right there. Now, you also have the eyedropper tool. So say you're going to be making some text and you want to use the same color as a money bag. Just use the eyedropper tool, just click here. And now your main color is that same color. And you can also see the hexadecimal code. Some other tools, the brush tool. Okay, so the brush tool can be used to, of course, draw with like a brush. The hardness actually, uh, it's hard to explain, but if I was to put it on hardness at 100%, you can see it's a solid line. And if I was to make the hardness much softer, it's a much softer line, like an actual brush, it's soft. Now, for example, one function for the brush is to actually make your thumbnails look a lot nicer. So what I do is I make the size a lot larger. So I'd make it like, not 2000, but like, you know, 800, for example. And then I select a color that's similar to the background color. And what you can do is actually add some nice like brushing effects like so, boom, 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 and then change the opacity over here to something like 20% or like 40%, and it has that glowing effect. So we're just going to leave that at 20%. Oh, uh, you also have the eraser tool, which you can use to erase the brush like so. And you can, of course, change the settings over here. You've got the paint bucket tool, which is self-explanatory. You have the pen tool. Now the pen tool is used to make shapes. It's very complicated to use, but I have a video that teaches you how to use it. It's called how to make a logo. So search that up to learn about that. And now we're going to talk about the text tool. So to create text, all you do is click like so, and it's going to create a new layer. And here you can select the font, the type of the font, the size of the font. You can check the color of the font here. So you can actually select a color. We're going to make it white. We're going to put test like so, and there we go. You can also center align it and left align it if you wanted to. And we can move it around with the moving tool or the selection tool, I guess it's called. And then you have your shape tools over here and you have your dragging tool to actually move around stuff. And you have the zoom tool to zoom in and to zoom out. You can actually zoom in by pressing control plus or command plus and com command and control minus as well. And then here you can select your secondary and primary colors by clicking and then selecting. You can also click over here and the eyedropper tool will select the color that you click on like so. So I've been talking quite a lot now and there's quite a few tools as you can tell, but say you end up losing one of your tools, how do you find them? Just go to window, which actually shows you everything that you can see right now and select the tool you want. So say I want to open up the swatches tool. I go to window, swatches, and boom, the swatches tool opens up. Now we're going to learn about blending options. So the first thing we're going to do is actually make things look a bit nicer. We're going to take this money bag and we're going to move it up. Now see when I move it up, how it curves a bit because my hand is not perfectly straight. I can hold shift and move it up like so. And it's going to go into one direction. So it's going to go diagonally, for example, and it can go vertically like so. And I'm going to put it up here. Then I'm going to move test and I'm going to align it. So I'm going to press control A like before, go to layer, align layers to selection, horizontal centers like so. And we are going to learn about these tools over here. So a couple important ones here is the text tool to actually change your te text settings, the size, the spacing, experiment around with these. Then you have the lock button over here. So say you want to make sure you don't move this money bag accidentally. What you can do is click on the lock button to lock it. And now we're going to look at blending options. So if you right click on a layer, you can actually open up blending options where you can actually edit stuff a bit more. So one thing you can do is add a stroke to the text and then click on stroke to actually edit the settings of the text. You can add color overlays. You can add shadows. One thing I like to add is a gradient. So I just change the opacity to 10%. Opacity basically means how transparent it is. So if the opacity is 0%, it's transparent. And if it's 100%, it's fully opaque. So I'm going to add a 10% gradient, which makes it look metallic. And then add a drop shadow, which is, of course, like a shadow behind the image. I'm going to make the distance 0 and the spread and size 33. Maybe a bit more, maybe 44. That looks pretty nice to me. I'm going to click on OK to close blending options. Now say I want to take these effects and add the same thing to 
to the money bag. How do I add these effects to the money bag without doing all the work again? I can right click the layer, go to copy layer style, and then I can right click on the money bag layer after I unlock it and go to paste layer style to paste the same blending options into the image. Now the final thing we're going to go over are the tools on the bottom over here. You can delete things of course, you can add a new layer, you can group things, and you can add some effects and open up blending options, or add the effects individually right here. And once you're done your image, you can go to File, Save As, and save the image as whatever you want. So I'm going to save this as a PNG since I don't want to edit it later. Click Save, and we're good to go. So that's about it for this video, guys. I know it was a bit fast and there was a lot of things to go over, but this is just like a really basic rundown of Photoshop. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching. My name is Iovo, and I'm signing out. Thank <laughs> you.